Good morning, guys. I'm in the woodshed again this morning. It is Saturday morning, and the Tennessee Volunteers do not have a football game today. So what better time to talk to you guys about electronic expansion valves and why we have uh, special tools to service them. Okay, so there's a couple of pieces that um, make up the electronic expansion valve. One of those being the valve body, the other portion being the coil. Okay, so there's multiple types of electronic expansion valves. The one that I'm showing you here is what I like to call a snap-on style, and it is the most common. Um, there are other styles that bolt on um, or screw on. You know, there's all types of different things out there. But in the VRV, VRF, mini split world, this is the most common that you're going to see. And even now, on some of the inverter-driven split systems, you're probably going to start seeing a lot of these. Um, so a lot of times I hear people ask, okay, well, if I want to get this open, can I simply just use, you know, like a solenoid coil magnet? You know, and the solenoid coil magnet would simply just slide over it and open it up. Um, but it doesn't work that way with EEVs. This only works for solenoids um, that are two-position. Electronic expansion valves are not two-position valves, okay? They're designed to have um, precise control. So they might operate on anywhere from 480 pulse scale to a 3,000 or 6,000 pulse scale, depending on um, the operation um, that they're intended for. So in a nutshell, there's a magnet inside of the EEV. Generally, this would be a valve body. I've cut it away for demonstration purposes. Okay, so there's a magnet inside of here. And the simplest way that I like to think about it is this is like a faucet in your home, okay? So fully turned clockwise, it's fully closed. No refrigerant should be passing through in the fully closed position. If you wanted to open it, you would turn it counterclockwise. Okay, so this one, since it's disassembled, I can pull the magnet all the way out of here, and you're gonna notice that there's a stem on the end of here. Okay, and this is pretty small, right? Um, this is why it's extremely important that you're purging when you're brazing um, on any system, but specifically on uh, systems that have EEVs. So if little pits uh, begin to occur in here from there being carbon in the system or dirt or trash or anything that's not supposed to be in there, refrigerant's traveling at a high rate of speed, impacts this uh, stem here, and it's gonna damage it. So even when it's fully closed, it's still allowing refrigerant to pass through, okay? So with that being said, um, we have to use um, a magnet, or an EEV magnet, I should say, not just any magnet, an EEV magnet. Um, so what the EEV magnet does is it's actually going to slide on top of the valve. I don't know if I want it fits. This won't fit. So it's going to slide on top of the valve, and you would simply turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on um, what direction you want it to go. So, you know, you want to get the system back into a state um, that you know what position the valve is in, whether it's, you know, turning the system off and all valves going shut, or a forced recovery position, you know, where you can drive the valves open. Um, and this would be necessary if you're replacing like a, a, an EEV coil or something such as that. It's a good idea to get the valve body back in a, into a known position, okay? Another thing that's worth noting is um, the maintenance on these EEVs. So particularly whenever the EEV is in an outdoor setting, you know, so the, the EEV is in an outdoor unit, um, you're going to have some rust buildup. It's going to happen. Okay, so whenever that rust builds up on the valve body itself and the coil, eventually the coil is not going to have the capacity to drive the EEV anymore. And then you're in a flood back uh, situation, unfortunately. Um, so in order to clean those on the smaller ones, you can simply use like a, a battery terminal brush. Um, it'll slide over top of the EEV valve body and then you just twist it to clean it. Okay, this Craftsman battery terminal cleaner actually has like a removable uh, fitting brush where you could just simply stick it inside of the coil and clean it up. Um, so this is kind of like a, a two-in-one tool here. On the larger valve bodies, um, this is not going to work. You're going to have to do something different um, like a, a Scotch-Brite pad or steel wool or something such as that. And then once you get everything cleaned up, just put you a thin film of three-in-one oil um, on each component, you know, on, on your valve body and then on the inside of that coil to help inhibit rust. So I hope you learned something today. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Thanks.